Hello everyone. Today I'm checking out a can of weld stick welder. I found these welders a while back and finally decided to check one out. This isn't the cheapest stick welder out there and it's fairly basic, but it's not super expensive. It has a good duty cycle. It has a three year warranty and it's made in Canada. So let's check it out. It comes with a carry bag that can hold the welder and cables. While the bag wouldn't protect the welder quite as well as a hard case if it was banging around the back of a truck or something, I like it for the fact that it doesn't add a lot of size or weight to the setup, and it doesn't take up a bunch of space in storage either like a hard case does. Plus it is padded, so it definitely does offer some protection. The cables are four gauge, they're copper cables, and they're 10 feet long. They also have pretty good insulation. The electrode holder is nothing super special, but it's decent quality. Uh, the spring is stiff, it feels pretty nice, and it does have uh, copper alloy jaws. The work clamp is just stamped steel, but it does have actual true copper jaws and a copper strap, and it's built fairly sturdy. It's definitely one of the better stamped steel clamps that I've come across, and I would see no reason to upgrade it. As for the welder itself, it feels solid and chunky. The metal case kind of feels like a thicker gauge than most, and you know, it just feels industrial quality and well built. But like I said, it is basic. It just has an analog dial for amperage adjustment, no digital display, and it just has a rocker switch to switch between stick and TIG modes, and that's it. It has a maximum output of 200 amps, with a 100% duty cycle at 150 amps in stick mode and a 100% duty cycle at 180 amps in TIG mode. And they claim that this rating was at 104 degrees Fahrenheit ambient temp. It also claims to have hot start, arc force, and electrode anti-stick functions, but they are all controlled automatically. None of them are manually adjustable. This machine operates at 208 to 240 volt input it is not a dual voltage machine. It cannot run on a 120 volt circuit. So it's a pretty simple machine, not a lot to talk about, but let's pull the case off and have a quick look inside. Having a look inside the welder, uh, the very first thing I noticed <laughs> is that it is awfully dusty. So this thing must have sat in a warehouse for a while or something, but overall it's actually like the outside, a very simple, basic kind of design. Not really a whole lot to it. All of the main uh, IGBTs and the rectifiers are all bolted to these two heat sinks. These are actually separate heat sinks. I can pull this little thing out. You can see there's two separate heat sinks and they just have this uh, divider here to keep the air inside there. And again, this just makes like a wind tunnel design. And if you look down here, you can see kind of the opening in between the heat sinks and there's actually four capacitors in here. So on this welder, the capacitors are directly in line with the airflow from the fan. And there's also this little black cover that goes right here that kind of like also just traps the air a little bit further down so that it all flows over top of the transformer, which pretty big beefy transformer there. But really pretty simple and basic. Uh, we do have where the power comes in, we have an inductor and a capacitor. So maybe a little bit of filtering. Um, I don't know if that could quite be enough to be power factor correction, but uh, we'll see how much it draws once we get it powered up. But if nothing else, there's at least some kind of filtering coming in on the input. And that's it. Pretty basic inside and out. Not a whole lot to see. It does have a proper uh, wire to ground the case. And nice big beefy power switch here. The other side is pretty uninteresting. It's literally just the back side of the circuit board. There's no components or anything on here. Just the back of the circuit board. It does have this piece of plastic in here to protect you know, the electrical components from the case, even though the case is probably uh, three quarters to maybe a little bit more from the board. So that's pretty much it, not a lot to it. I will get this put back together and we will try it out. I guess I'll get 6010 performance out of the way first. It's not good. The arc goes out very easily and you can forget about long arcing even a little bit. It runs 6011 just fine, but some people are looking specifically for 6010 use. In responses to Amazon questions in the answer section, I saw Cannaweld tell one person that it would not do 6010, and I saw him tell another person that it absolutely would. I emailed Cannaweld before I ordered the welder and asked them for clarification as to whether it would run 6010, and they said it would. 
I would definitely put this welder on the side of no, it cannot run 6010. It's a shame that Cannonweld themselves seem to be a bit flip-floppy on this subject. As far as other rods, like 7018, 6013, 7014, it runs all of those just fine. Performance is about what I would expect for a good, if very basic, stick welder. Arc starts aren't as effortless as some of the best machines out there, but they're not bad. And overall, it runs just fine. Amp draw isn't bad at max output, drawing around 35 to 40 amps. It's not as efficient as some, but it's okay. The analog amperage dial isn't perfectly accurate, but it's not far off. Maxed out, the welder delivers around 205 amps. And when I set it to 125, I got about 33 amps. There are no markings between 75 and 100, but when I had it set around halfway between those two lines, I got 90 amps of output. So it's not too bad. I wanted to be excited about this welder, but ultimately it's just not as interesting as I wanted it to be. If it ran 6010 well, I might be a little more enthusiastic about it. Many people are looking for a good stick welder that runs 6010 well. But lacking that, the MMA201 just isn't that exciting when compared to some of the competition out there. For instance, the Fronius Trans Pocket is far more expensive, but it's still exciting because of the fantastic quality and attention to detail, the super smooth arc, it runs 6010 quite well, and is just chock full of features. And going the other direction, something like the Clutch ST201i DV is interesting because it's cheaper, it's built surprisingly well for the money, it runs 6010 surprisingly well, and it's feature rich. Don't get me wrong, the Cannaweld MMA201 is a good machine. It's made in Canada, it seems robust, it has an excellent duty cycle, the accessories it comes with should serve you perfectly well for years to come, and it has a three-year warranty. So there is a lot to like here, just bear in mind that the ARC performance doesn't really stand out from the crowd, and I wouldn't recommend it for someone looking to run 6010. So hopefully that was helpful. If you have any questions or if there's anything else you'd like me to test out, let me know. As always, thanks for watching. Take care.